Okay, so let's take a look at this problem and see if we can figure out what's going on. So um, this is the beginning. The Lightboard class models a two-dimensional display of lights. So whenever they say two dimensions, I'm imme immediately thinking of a two-dimensional array. Um, and each light is going to be either on or off. It's represented by a Boolean value. So it's a Boolean two-dimensional array. And maybe I haven't done as many of those. Uh, but the, yeah, the general idea is you're going to have a series of values in some sort of table, I guess. And rather than having integers in here or doubles in here, each one of these is either going to be true or false, depending on the situation. Uh, you will implement a constructor to initialize the display and a method to evaluate a light. Awesome. Uh, so here's the public class light board. They're giving me some code here, uh, giving me some comments. The lights on the board where true represents on and false represents off. Got it. And here's my first bit of actual code there. Uh, looks like I'm declaring that I'm going to have that two-dimensional Boolean array, and it's going to be called lights. Good. Uh, here's another Java doc down here. Constructs a lightboard object having num rows, rows, and num calls, columns. Got a precondition and a postcondition. And then this is the header for that. And then it, down here, public lightboards, I've got a number of rows and a number of columns that are going to be sent in. And this is my part A here. They say to be implemented in part A. So I'll look forward to seeing that in a few moments. I didn't want to mention this pre, uh, precondition and postcondition because these are important. They're not, um, they're not necessarily things that you're going to lose points on. These are just meant to be super helpful guidelines in terms of what's going on. So they're just letting you know with this precondition that you don't have to worry about any edge cases where maybe uh, you know, they're going to give you a trick input and we're not going to give you any rows or any columns and make sure your code can handle that. This is just letting you know. Now you're going to have a serious number of rows and a non-zero number of columns and so that we can uh, use that information to create our two-dimensional array. And likewise, this post condition, each light, ooh, oh, well, this is interesting. Each light has a 40% probability of being set to on. So apparently when we construct this thing, the lights are going to be on or off. And it's, uh, when they say probability, that makes me think random and 40%. So I'm going to have to think about how to do that. And this is just letting me know, yeah, by the time you get done constructing this thing, this should also have been taken care of. So I want to make sure I pay attention to that. Let me move, uh, move a little bit farther down on this. Uh, it looks like the next part here, go ahead and get rid of all this. Looks like the next part they're saying, well, what are we doing for part B? In part B, evaluate a light in row index row and column index call and return a status as described in part B. So they're going to tell us a little bit more, I guess, down here. And then precondition, row and call are valid indices. Again, we don't have to worry about somebody trying to slip in a negative number or anything like that. They're going to be fair there. And in this one, public Boolean, evaluate light, int row and int call. OK, they'll send in those things. And then they're going to tell us what we're going to do for part B. And then they always, often, they often include something like this, where they say, you know, there may be other stuff that's going on in this um, class, and we're not going to tell you everything that's going on. And that's not to be tricky or uh, misleading. That's just to let you know we're focusing on a few different things, and there may be other stuff going on, and you really don't need to worry about that other stuff if we don't tell you to worry about it. All right. Well, I think I'm ready to start. I mean, that's a nice overview there. I think I'm ready to start taking a look at this part A here. And uh, again, this is going to be a constructor, so I'm not expecting it's going to be super complicated. We'll see what happens. They say, uh, write the constructor for the Lightboard class, initializing lights so that each light is set to on with a 40% probability. Uh, OK, and then off, I guess, for with a 60% probability. The notation lights are C represents an array element at row R and column C. Complete the Lightboard constructor below. And they've given me some initial code here. So I know anything that I'm going to write just has to uh, has to follow this. And this is all this is restating what was there before. So yeah, let me think about what's going on. I already know from up above, take a look up here. I know they already declared this Boolean variable lights, the Boolean two-dimensional array lights. So I really just need to 
initialize lights then, I guess, that maybe that will be the first thing. And then I can worry about going through and figuring out this 40% probability. So how do I uh, initialize some lights here? Um, I think I'll just say lights. I've already declared the array, so I'll say lights is going to be equal to a new Boolean array, right? So it's going to be Boolean. It's two dimensional, so I'll include both of those there. Oh, wait, but for this, I have to actually give the dimensions, right? I have to give the dimensions. Oh, and they've told me how many rows and they've told me how many columns. So I'll set this to num rows and num calls. Remember that Java is row major, so we put the rows first and then the columns. I'm not sure what that. It's probably going to put Boolean in there or something silly. So good. So there's our new Boolean array there that has the right dimensions. And now I need to go through and get a 40% probability of setting something to on. So I guess I'll just do this. I know how to set up a nested loops to go through an array, right? So I'll say for int r equals zero, classic pattern here, r less than the number of rows, r plus plus. It's pretty straightforward. And then I'll nest this loop in there for int c to represent the columns, c less than the number of columns, c++. Plus plus. And in here, this is where I try and figure out this 40% probability thing. So um, there's, a, there's a couple different ways that I could do this, but basically I need to check to see if I've got a 40% probability happening. And if so, then I'm going to do this thing set to on. So one way to do that would just be to take uh, math.int sorry, math.random, and that's going to get me a number between 0 and 0 0.999999 repeating. I could do that. Uh, I could do that, and I could just say, you know, if math.random, this range of values, is less than 0 0.4, that means if it's anything from 0 to 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 something, if that's less than 0 0.4, that's going to be that 40% probability. If I'm not comfortable with that, I might be more comfortable with something like this. If, and what I'll do is I'll take that math.random. There are other random things you can use, but this is the most common one that we use. And I'll multiply that by 10 to get me 0 to 0.999. But then when I int that, that's going to get me 0 to 9. And that's, a, you know, that's more of that integer thing that I'm looking at. And if that value is a 0 or a 1 or a 2 or a 3, in other words, if it's less than 4, then 4 times out of 10, that's going to be true. That's going to be the case. And I can go ahead and do whatever I'm going to do. So either way, whether you stick with the, um, the double value there or you try and convert it to an int and play around with it there, either way works. Probably the shorter one is just to say if math.random is less than 0 0.4. If that comes out to be zero, uh, less than 0 0.4, then I know I've got that 40% probability. And what I'm going to do then is set, maybe I'll just do this, I won't use curly braces for this. I'll set light r, sorry, lights r c. And that's going to be set to, I can't set it to on. What is it? Oh, it's on, it's true if it's on. So I'll set that to true. Else, if that turned out not to be the case, then lights R C can be set to false. You can actually shortcut this a little bit. You wouldn't even need to have this line down here because it turns out when you initialize an array, if it's not set to true, uh, it's it's uh, well. The, I should say the default value for Boolean expressions is false. So you could technically leave that off there, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it on just because I'm being very complete here, uh, trying to be very clear in my solution. So I think that is probably going to do it for part A. That's not too bad. Uh, what I'd like to have you do now is go ahead and take a look at part B here. See if you can figure out what's happening with part B, and then we'll try and solve that together in the next video.